it's time to work on six stance. And that is a forward stride squat. And notice that I take this stride and then I'm squatting down on this advanced foot. I'm squatting down on this advanced flat foot. Notice my body is over that. Everything is in fairly good alignment. And I'm holding myself in this position with that toe of that flexing, pushing back foot. Now, this is different from what the exercise enthusiasts do, what they call a lunge squat. Here, the body is in the middle between both feet, and they're squatting here and you and supporting themselves e pretty equally on both feet, where doing this forward stride squat, 75% of the weight is on this front foot and only about 25% on the back. And of course, those ratios are gonna vary with who's doing it and how well you're doing it. So don't get overly uh, enthusiastic about, oh, I have to have this much or that much. The big thing is this back pushing foot. As we covered in the previous videos on the forward stride, this is where the push and pointing that knee forward really come in handy because you need to make sure you push and hold here. And where are you coming to? This is, remember that stand on a foot? Well, that's where you're at and that's where you're stopping to do this forward stride, forward stride, squat, not a forward lunge squat. So everything we worked on, especially in that last video, sets you up to do this. And once you have the ability to do this forward stride squat with ease, with comfort, with stability, you have mastered everything you need to be able to do virtually anything you want. Now put that in quotes because I said virtually anything you want. And it all depends on what your ability level is, what your physical ability is and what you're able to muster with what you have. So working on it from our restrictive posture elements, when you're able to get here and here, you're golden. You're mastering all those issues that have been holding you back. And this is the one advanced, the most advanced that you need to be able to do to put all the, of everything else you want together because these six basic stances I've covered are the essential building blocks for almost everything we do. You look at any activity that anybody is doing and you will see these six stances within that movement in some combination across the board. The sixth stance, you really need to work on it. And an easy way to work on that is with different activities. Different activities where you practice getting down into that posture. Now, bowling is one that comes to mind. And I use it quite a bit with people that I work with because it's very effective, it's very simple, and most everybody has done it, rolling something across the floor, whether it's a bowling ball or it doesn't really matter. To start us into doing this forward stride squat and then throwing the ball, rolling it across the floor, let's backtrack just a little bit and work our way into it. Now, the first thing is, Let's do it with a side stride squat. So I'm pushing from 
this foot from the side, side stride, and then I'm squatting on this foot. That foot is doing the same thing. It's flexing, it's pushing me and holding me right here. And now I can roll this ball across the floor. This is the way to practice and remind yourself if you're having difficulties of doing it forward. To get yourself reacquainted with this flexing foot, this flexing foot pushing from the ball and toes area of the foot into this side stride and then squatting down. Let's review the squatting movement in relation to the different pressures in our feet. If I'm doing a simple squat, for example, if I'm just standing here on both feet and coming straight down and straight up, I've kept 50% of the pressure on both feet. I have 50% here and I have still 50% here. But the 50% up here is not speaking of pressures now. The 50% up here is not the same 50% here because as I squat down, the pressure increases, but it's increasing equally in both feet, so it's still a 50 50 split. Now, when we do this side stride and then squat on this right leg in, in this example, when I come here and then squat, it's no longer 50 50. Now it's 75 here and 25 here. I want you to try this yourself. I want you to feel when you do that, which foot becomes heavier. When you're here and then do a side stride and then squat, feel which foot becomes heavier. Now, so I don't belabor the point here and cause more confusion than what this normally causes people. I did not ask which foot becomes heaviest because this foot is heaviest because I've transferred 75 out of my body weight and pressure there, right? But remember, when I squat down, it's still a ratio of 75%. So when I ask which foot becomes heavier, when I squat down in this setup, they both become heavier just as they both become heavier here for the exact same reasons. And this is what becomes confusing to people that haven't really thought about this and especially those with restricted postures. Because they're out here, and as we covered before, it's, they're trying to do it on one foot, and this other foot's not helping them very much, and everything's lost. So recall that this is a continuous push, and holding that push in all of our movements, you're holding it until the movement calls for everything to be transferred here, and then you bring this foot in, for example. But here, we're just in this stride, so this foot doesn't stop pushing and holding. That pressure doesn't change, except how we change it with increasing pressure by working muscles. And that's very, very important, because many times people will start doing this and they'll be up here and they'll be falling forward. This back foot comes off the floor and they lose everything. In or they're so focused on coming forward here that they're using upper body and forgetting about that push. And or then they're, they're trying to muscle up with, with arms and that foot comes off the floor. So starting out, we want to minimize that because the force for throwing this fictitious ball forward, much of it, most of it, is coming from here. Legs. That's powering the movement. 
Brew. And then this is supplementing it. The importance here is hold that push so you stay here on this foot and then squatting down. It's holding that pressure, securing you in that movement and in that stance. So practice all of that here, a side stride, squat, and feel that pressure and both feet increase as you come down. And doing this, people always answer that question that I ask which foot becomes heavier with, well, this one, because I'm squatting over it. It's the mind forgets about this one. So work on that. I want you to, on purpose to focus on that pushing foot to come over here and hold it there as you do this movement, focus on the lesser pressure of the foot that's pushing you into the movement, holding you in the movement and on this flat foot, and then do it. Don't become over-focused here because too many of you, when you're having difficulties with your posture and the movement, you'll over-focus here. Forget about that most important foot over there that's controlling the movement and you'll cause yourself problems. Focus there, push, squat, throw. Now, you have to also push your body over here far enough to get this arm outside of your body here so you can move that ball. Those of you that are standing here on this inside pressure and then squatting down, well, that hand's going to be here, and you're going to be having to do all sorts of weird things with your arm just to throw that ball. Perfect this. Boom. Where are you moving to on this foot? Right in the center. Flat foot. Pushing from the ball of foot, flat foot, down, boom, holding that. If you start to release that, things are going to get a little bit shaky. Okay, now what about going forward? Well, the accepted way and the balanced way of doing this naturally is when we throw something, we're doing it with opposite arm and leg moving in different directions. In other words, if I'm going to roll this ball forward, I should have a ball here, shouldn't I? If I'm going to roll this ball forward, I want to push off of this right foot, Left foot comes forward, I squat down here, and then I come forward. Okay, that's how we normally do it. But for those people with a restricted posture, that sometimes becomes difficult and it becomes destabilizing. When they come here and here, I want you to consider a rectangle. Where right now, in this rectangle, my feet are on the back two corners of it. And when I come forward, this foot is going to be in the left front corner of that rectangle. And this back foot is going to be in the right back corner of that rectangle. And the point is this. They're throwing this ball. This ball is a one kilogram ball, by the way. So when they're throwing that, this weight is coming forward, and or even when it's a lighter ball, there's shoulder and arms coming forward, and the problem is this corner is unprotected, and they fall out of it. Because this weight moving forward is destabilizing to them because you should know the answer to that because, because they haven't secured their foundation up. They haven't come down and increased that pressure 
And typically, it's they don't have this pressure back here enough to hold them here. So all this movement out here in the unprotected corner is stabilized with the feet. Also notice, if I failed to mention it before, this is not squatting down with one knee. This is squatting down with both knees. You're increasing the pressure into both feet. You're grounding both feet. You're increasing that stability in both knees squat. If you're just trying to squat on one, you get something that looks like this. And that's what many of you will do. And what happens with that? You probably already know. Right out the front. Because the pressure in that back pushing foot was very weak. The tipping forward from the ball area of this foot was stronger. Upper body being forward, and over you go. So the easier way to get around some of these restricted posture issues is to do it with the same leg going forward as your arm throwing the ball. So here it's point that knee forward and then squat. Now when you're doing this stuff with the ball, this corner where all this extra movement is taking place is protected. So for those people with any kind of a problem doing this, it's not cheating and it's not doing it like a girl. It's protecting this corner, doing what you can to make it better, and then throwing the ball. Right now, the distance you throw it doesn't matter. The accuracy of where it goes when you roll it doesn't matter. The only thing that matters here initially is getting this correct, and then being able to relax your body, and then using your elbow, and remember when we were tossing that ball, the same thing here, to relax that hand, relax the arm elbow, and just let it roll. But if you don't have the support foundation down here, it's not going to happen. The other point is, you want to be able to squat down low enough to get a weight on here towards the floor. So you're not throwing it up in the air and bouncing it. Down. Both knees. Once you become more stabilized with that, then it's opposite and down. And if you continue to have a problem, don't worry about which one goes forward. Do the one where you're the most stable, the one that gives you the best chance of success, the better ability. It's OK. I like to use this weighted ball when I'm working with people because it challenges them to get down a little bit further because this takes a little more effort to throw, to roll it across the floor. So the further they come down, the more power and support they're going to have down here and the better they're going to be able to do up here. Practice this. Don't worry about staying here in the middle and squatting down right now unless you can do it. If you don't have a problem doing that, hey, go for it. As an exercise, as a strengthening and agility exercise, all that good stuff. But for throwing the ball, you're not going to be back here. 
you're going to be up here. So there is a reason, and there's a different activity that goes along with both. So work it, play with it, have some fun with it, challenge yourself, challenge yourself with other people doing the same thing, rolling the ball back and forth. But you must be out there doing it. You must be practicing this. And this is leading up to another big point that we have with these restricted postures. What is the one thing that is the scariest thing that you do? The scariest thing is going down steps. It can be one step or 10 steps. They're scary when you're having this restrictive posture day and things aren't working too well and you're looking to take that step down. It's the most complicated movement we do. That's why it's scary and it's more difficult. Going upstairs is not as bad. That's a forward lunge, sense weight squat, because as you're going up, you're squatting or maybe not physically squatting but getting the same pressure on that front foot and pushing to go up but coming down it's different it's scarier it makes us stiffen up even when we're trying not to there's some complexity about it that just makes it something we'd rather not have to do and we will be covering going up and down steps in detail. But the preparation for it is the six stance. And as I just said, that's bringing you to go up there. Coming downstairs, much more complex. So there's still another something in the way that we're going to be covering to prepare you for going downstairs. Whether it's one step, 10 steps, whatever doesn't matter. A step is a step, and especially down, especially if there's no hand drill. So you must work on and perfect this forward stride squat to be able to go on and do the rest, and to be able to do everything else you've been doing even better. So if you made it this far, you're on a roll. And more to go. So let's get to it. Happy practicing.